real quick by a show of hands. Who here is actually in the nutrition project this year? All right. All right, well, um, this is the uh, Nutrition Healthy Living Project that we're doing for 2009 summer. Um, a little background. In the summer of 2008, Harlem Children's Society teamed up with the Columbia University's Chalk Program, which is choosing healthy and active lifestyles for kids to assess the price and quality of food sold at farm markets and supermarkets in Harlem and Manhattan. Um, the group last year hypothesized that the price of produce sold at these supermarkets is less than at the farmer markets, and the quality of produce sold at supermarkets is less than at the farm markets. Um, within their study, they found that their results included the produce sold at farmer markets was cheaper than that sold at supermarkets in both Harlem and Manhattan. There was little quality difference between the locations but there were significant statistical results that showed the color of produce was better in Manhattan locations than in Harlem locations. So basically what they did last year was went to various sites and took different vegetables and fruits, looked at the color of them, assessed them, and came up with this uh, study. And this year we're going to do something slightly different. Last year they only just did Manhattan. And um, this year we're going to extend it to five boroughs. We're going to do different, uh, multiple sites in each borough. So it's going to be a little larger. So for this year, the purpose of this project is to evaluate the quality and the availability of specified food at farm markets, grocery stores, and corner stores in various locations throughout the five boroughs in New York City. Uh, we're going to identify food-related health problems, define the characteristics of a given area, and draw a conclusion based on the correlation between the various aspects. So basically what that means is um, not just the foods in itself, but we're going to be looking at the associated economic differences within different communities and so forth, and see if there's a relationship between that and the health factors like obesity, diabetes, and things of that nature. So, um, How we're going to do this is just basically using the um, basic scientific method, and I'm sure many of you have seen this a million times, but I'll read through it briefly. Um, define the question, gather information and resources, form a hypothesis, perform experiment and collect data, analyze data, interpret data, and draw a conclusion that serves as the starting point for the new hypothesis publish results and of course retest, which will be done by others. So basically how we're going to do this is three different phases, and phase one is the collecting of the data. And what we'll be doing is doing the field, excuse me, doing the field research, and that's when we go to different sites and so forth, and look at the fruits, vegetables, and see the availability of certain foods like um, soy products, uh, healthy alternatives, and things of this nature. But at the same time, we'll be looking at the uh, surrounding environments and that is the different types of restaurants that they have, the uh, living conditions, and things of that nature. And also, at that same time, we'll be searching with various databases, and this is using the U.S. Department of Health and U.S. Census information, and we're looking at demographics and the economics of the surrounding areas and the prevailing health conditions. So with that, our um, observation we do on our own, we will compare that with the statistical information that's already been collected by different levels of government. Phase two is the data transformation. And what we're doing in data transformation is make a visual representation of all the information that we're collecting. So once a given area is properly defined, and by properly defined, I mean um, representing the uh, different uh, demographics that live there, the socioeconomic things like low income, high income, things of that nature. Students will be mapping and graphing the data to assist in their interpretation. Phase three is analyzing and interpreting the information. So students will be looking at various graphs and charts, maps of the sites visited. Once students have a clear understanding of what the data tells them, they will then test their hypothesis with their findings. And then, of course, our favorite part is writing a study on it. So, the uh, skills gained in this research. Students will further develop their skills throughout uh, and thought in such areas. Uh, research, and there will be abil the ability to use their tools at their disposal and prime, properly find information. So, understanding the jargon that's uh, used with these databases and things like that. And the uh, analysis aspect of it is students will be looking at the data sets and be able to properly identify the trends and patterns that exist. So looking at the uh, statistical information and seeing if there is actually a pattern that takes place, why certain things happen in certain areas, things of that nature. So, and of course geography, students will gain a broader sense of geography and become introduced to the application of GIS, Global Information System. So, um, well, nutrition students will actually do some hands-on application of this, so we'll get a chance to use that. So in conclusion, by the end of this project, students will gain a better understanding of nutritional health, identify different social economic characteristics, and get hands-on experience in this field of science. Furthermore, students will be able to 
suggest possible solutions for the health problems that affect the local communities throughout New York City. So that is the uh, overview of the whole project. So are there any questions? Yes, please. Uh, well, basically, uh, Dr. Sad asked me to explain GIS, and GIS is Geographical Information System, and what that is, is a tool to look at data on top of a geographical uh, area. For example, take Manhattan, you look at the uh, spread of certain disease or something like that, and using this, you get a visual representation of what you're able to find. So, that is GIS. Yes? Perhaps you might explain GIS in terms of the layers. The layers. Well, there's very different layers that you can use with GIS. Um, basically, you have a map in itself which just shows the given area, and then on top of that, you can add data like um, demographics or ethnicity. Then on top of that, you can add um, things like age population. Then on top of that, you can show um, areas that have people who have died from AIDS, people who have just recently infected, things like that. So it really helps you get a better understanding of the information and see it clear. So, any further questions?